Hi. Hello, everyone. Great to meet you all. I speak no Vietnamese, so I'm not even going to try, but Harrison, you did a great job. Um, I want to spend a little bit of time telling you about SWE and why we're here. My name is Adni Abiodun, one of the co-founders of Mr. Labs. We've been building in crypto for a very long time. I started off in the Bitcoin industry, building Bitcoin mining companies, um, got involved in launching blockchain for some of the largest companies in the world, was recently a Facebook leading product and innovation for what we're building for Project Libra. And when we left Facebook, we built SWE, or Mr. Labs, a company. And our goal is to build a global coordination layer for the entire internet. SWE is more than just a blockchain. It's more than that. And hopefully by the end of my talk today, and also the talk after that on Mr. Seti, it will give you an idea on how we believe this is the fundamental technology that will power the entire web. Our vision, our vision for SWE is to coordinate movement of value and assets across the internet. Um, you, you might have heard of blockchains, and I think blockchains are a great innovation, and they serve to give a global layer for effectively registering assets. We think the goal is to go beyond that in building a layer where everybody in the world can coordinate value and assets, whether it's a website, all the way to actual assets, all the way to things related to real world assets as a whole. But we need a single layer for the internet to coordinate movement of assets and movement of value across the entire globe. And we think SWE has been built uniquely to solve that at the Facebook and Google scale. How have we grown? SWE has been live for just over a year. It's one of the newest chains in the market. And I'm happy to say it's one of the fastest growing chains in the world. In fact, SWE is the fastest growing non-EVM chain in the world today. In a space of a year, SWE has already overtaken incumbent chains that have been around for four to five years. Um, higher TVL, higher number of users, higher number of transactions, and innovating at the speed of light. We're constantly innovating with new algorithms and new breakthroughs on a month-by-month -month basis. And this is because we believe fundamentally that consumers are going to need new experiences that bring on an usher age of a digital, uh, digital entertainment that's never been possible before. Whether it's coming from gaming, whether it's coming from finance, whether it's coming from commerce, we built SWE to effectively take care of all those use cases at the scale that the world actually needs. What does that mean? SWE has grown to over 700 million TVL in a very short space of time. Um, over, over that same time as well, uh, more than 50% of assets that are being bridged from Ethereum are actually going directly to SWE. So what does that mean? Financial efficiency has been found on SWE. Financial opportunities are being found on SWE. And on the underlying, SWE has never had any outage, no downtime, no failed transactions, no congestion in the network, no spike in gas fees, no hacks. Because the platform is built to be safe on day one, and we're seeing a transfer of assets and value from existing ecosystems to SWE at a rapid rate. And we believe SWE is going to ultimately be the number one chain sometime very, very soon. There are over 3 billion transactions on SWE. In fact, SWE did more transactions than Bitcoin in the first six months than Bitcoin's ever done in history. And in terms of adoption as well, if you look at the numbers, um, we've, done, we've been able to demonstrate that SWE can do over 297,000 transactions per second. It's been up 100% of the time, never had any outage. SWE has industry-leading latency, 400 milliseconds for a transaction to be final. That is faster than it takes for a website to load. SWE gets finality faster than websites load on the internet. That's the ultimate way that the, these platforms should ultimately work. We've never had a spike in fees, even though SWE has done more transactions in a day than the majority of blockchains that exist today. Fees do not rise. Fees always stay flat dollar-wise in SWE. Separately from that, we are announcing Mr. SETI. Mr. SETI is a version two of SWE's consensus protocol. Um, as you know, SWE has two types of transactions. Um, owned object transactions, which is when I send you money or, or, or I send you an asset or we, you and I transfer an NFT between uh, each other, that does not require consensus, which is a game changer for SWE. So there are a class of transactions in SWE that does not need consensus. SWE already finalizes that at 500 milliseconds. Today, transactions that need consensus, whether you're doing a trade on, an, on a DEX or you're doing something that requires coordination between one or more parties, that is currently taking about 1.5 seconds on the chain. We're announcing that with, um, with Mr. Seti version 2 consensus in testnet right now, we're at 390-ish 390, um, 390 um, 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 
uh, nanos, um, my, um, sorry, 309 milliseconds for latency as a whole right now, which is industry changing. This is the first time in history that you can have shared consensus lower than a second. It's a, it's a game changer. So we don't think anybody will get anywhere close to this anytime soon. What that means is when you click on a button to do a trade on a DEX, when you click on a button to play a game, it's final before the website reloads. That is the level of precision and the level of performance that SWE has brought to the market. The closest competitor is in the seconds, multiple seconds. Separately from that, we've seen a spike in the amount of users in the ecosystem. SWE has had a daily active user rate of 2.1 million users. Um, actively, we're having over a million users a day on the SWE blockchain. That is more users than the majority of blockchains today. And why? It's because SWE is just an easy chain to use. It's easy to onboard. And I want to talk to you about some of the things we're doing around UX shortly. There'll be a surprise for you at the end of the talk. What's the goal? Um, our view, Web3 market is way too small. There are only 40 million wallets in Web3 in reality, and maybe 20,000 developers in Web3. At Facebook and Google, we had over 100,000 developers. So there are more developers in Facebook and Google alone than they exist in Web3. What do we need to do to bring more users, more devs into the ecosystem? One, we need a platform that allows every developer, whether you're a JavaScript developer all the way to a C-sharp developer, that you can understand and code very, very quickly. We're happy to say most developers, when they learn SWE Move, become quite proficient within four days. It's an object-oriented programming language that is Rust-like capabilities. Secondly, we think the barriers of bringing users into Web3 needs to go beyond the boundaries of a wallet. Wallets are one of the most painful things to use today. We need to innovate and allow users to onboard without the concept of wallets, without the concept of gas, and without the concept of things that just hold them back. And we think one of the biggest areas to do that is gaming. We've invested heavily in gaming because we think gaming naturally transitions itself to where users owning their own assets, being in control of their own assets, and being able to control aspects of the game is going to be very valuable. Just looking at these numbers alone, Fortnite, Roblox, Minecraft, these have way more users than Web3 as a whole. And we absolutely believe that gaming is what's going to drive the growth and adoption of DeFi and other primitives in Web3. Not the pr protocols themselves, but influx of users that need to swap value between asset A and asset B, um, buy and sell assets on chain, whether NFTs or in-game assets, or need to actually perform moves on chain and receive points as reward for how well they do. All these things are going to be coordinated with a global coordination layer, and we think that's going to be SWE. Ultimately, we think SWE will be the highest value when it comes to actually doing meaningful user interactions on chain. And we've built the chain to scale to enable that to happen. Why are developers choosing SWE? Good question. SWE, right now, fastest chain, no maximum throughput. SWE does not have a maximum throughput. I showed you that we're already able to perform 297,000 TPS. That's on a minimum hardware configuration for the network. If validators double the amount of hardware they use, the TPS doubles. If they treble the amount of hardware they use, they get three times the three P um, TPS. There is no maximum throughput on SWE. It's the only chain that has this performance benefit. Also, storage on SWE is very cheap. SWE is the cheapest chain in the world to store data on. Most blockchains, when you want to store an NFT, you store a record of ownership and some file on IPFS. On SWE, we have projects storing full 4K files, images on SWE directly real images, so you actually own the, uh, the, uh, the art. You can actually hide elements of the art where only the owner can see the full 4K image as well, if you want to go that far. But we think full asset representation is only possible at low cost on SWE. Another thing, if you're building a game, you want to be able to change the lore of the, the history of the asset. Right now, most chains, specifically EVM, when I want to change from one asset to another, you burn it, <clears throat> and then you get a brand new one, you lose all the history related to it. On SWE, because SWE is an object-oriented system, you can build complex objects on-chain. And if you want to change the object, you want to mutate the object, all that history stays on-chain. If you want to build a, a hand or a sword or a character and endow that character with different um, traits, you can store all that information and change that information on-chain directly. No need to do it off-chain. All the history, one sword versus another sword, they might look the same, but one might be owned by the most famous um, YouTuber in the world, that's going to have more value than one that is only owned by you. So we think the history of an asset makes a lot of sense to have on-chain. 
Separately, we have a lot of primitives on SWE that is just not possible anywhere else. Social login on chain. The blockchain verifies your session with Google or Amazon or whatever service that you use. Um, you can try and sign transactions without having to click and approve every single time to play a video game. Sponsor transactions. You can hide gas from users. Users don't even need to know the blockchain exists. All these are built into SWE from day one. And finally, one of the things we're very proud of is enforceable royalties. If you want to be an NFT creator and you want to make sure that marketplaces do not circumvent your royalties, we've built in standards that makes that possible. So you always earn your royalty and it's impossible to circumvent. We think this is very important if you think about creators and you want to build use cases that creators ultimately want to monetize. It is unfair that a creator can create an asset today and then their revenue stream is destroyed by uh, marketplaces in the future. SWE so enforces royalties so that um, creators always remain economically stable as a result. And we believe gaming is only going to get better. Um, SWE games are going to be game changing, pardon the pun. Ultimately, we think the kind of games you're going to play on SWE are the kind of game that you actually want to play. We don't think a world where a spreadsheet is turned into a game is fun. You need to have really fully immersive games where it's not all about financialization. It's about ownership. It's about extending the shelf life of the game. It's about making it more fun and allowing you to extract value out of the game over time. So we're going from pixelated, boring games with multiple approvals to simple games of social login where the wallet is hidden in the back end. What about Swee's gaming future? We recently announced this year that we'll be launching the Swee Play 0x1 games console. The Swee Play 0x1 games console is a world's first. It is a full gaming um, device that will play both your PC, existing PC games, and powerful Web3 games as well on a single device. You'll be able to order it. We'll be announcing ordering sometime this year. But ultimately, for the first time in the world, you have an app store that doesn't have the same restrictions that Epic and Steam and other uh, app stores may have today. And you can still play those games if you want. You don't need to choose between Web2 and Web3. You have a gaming device that's as powerful as your PC, and you get the benefit of earning rewards whether you're playing a Web2 game or Web3 game. The wallet is inbuilt completely, and ultimately, I think over time, you start to see, we'll be announcing this year a plethora of titles that are going to be launching on the Play 0x1. Built into the 0x1 is a natural bridge. So if you want to bridge assets from Solana, Ethereum, any, anywhere else, you'll be able to bridge it directly onto the 0x1 and run them directly on SWE. SWE is not going to have high gas fees. It's not going to have timeouts or latent, um, high latency. We think it's going to be the most pleasurable experience and it's going to be the most powerful games console for the handheld um, gaming industry. It is a desktop class silicon that's running. It's not a mobile class silicon, it's desktop grade silicon, which means you can play the most demanding games as a whole. We've actually been running League of Legends on a game directly as well, on a system. So if you want to scan the QR code, you can get onto the wait list. There's a line is very long, but get onto the wait list. There will be a surprise for a few people as well as a result. But we plan to announce um, official pre-orders um, sometime this year for the Sweet Play 0x1. I've been talking a lot about UX. SWE in the Web3 industry by far has been touted as having, one, the best developer experience, and two, the best user experience as a whole. We are very, very pedantic. We care a lot about user experience because the average day-to-day -day user does not care about wallets, does not care about tokens. They care about being able to engage with a platform. So bringing barriers in front of their face is not a great way to adopt users. It's very expensive to acquire users. You pay a lot of money on ads only to slow them down and say, download a wallet, go and buy something before you engage. We think that world should be gone. We're introducing Stashed. Blockchain itself has a wallet problem in our world. We think the wallet is too much of a barrier of entry. We think as a whole, the web has a wallet problem. How many wallets do we need to have? I have my PayPal, I have my Venmo, I have X and Y and Z, nonstop. It's very, very confusing and to have Consumers make those kind of choices is a very difficult thing to think about. So this year, we, we launched something called Stashed. It is one click. It, is, it works on mobile. And it's as powerful as Cash App, Venmo, or any payments app they've ever had before. It's called Stashed. And today, I'm going to get you involved in actually engaging with Stashed for the first time. Stashed is a social-based, web-based wallet that is self-custodial. You can sign in with your Google account. 
You'll be able to sign in with Kakao and other services as well. You can sign in with your Twitch account, and instantly you have a Web3 wallet without having to onboard or go, go to some exchange to get um, assets to be able to engage with. You effectively have an asset that you control via your own social login. In fact, it's the blockchain itself that verifies your session with Google, Kakao, or any service provider. There's no middle layer in between. So you are in full control of your asset. It's fully private. So Google do not know what transactions you're signing. Facebook do not know what transactions you're signing. Kakao do not know what transactions you're signing. You have full control, and at any given time, you can transfer assets in and out whenever you want. It's only possible on SWE. Next, um, right now, it's possible to transfer, send a link to family and friends, onboard them with Stashed. We're going to be adding the ability to have on and off ramps, so you'll be able to cash in, cash out directly on, on Stashed. You have domain names, so you'll be able to pick out your own name. We're going to remove the Web3 um, web addresses entirely from the experience. So all you need to know is your friend's username on Stash and be able to send assets directly using Stash. The address should not exist for average day users. And over time, there's going to be a Stash debit card that not only we can launch, but other protocols and ecosystem will be able to launch on top of as well. I want at this point for you to reach out under your seat, each one of you. Put your hand underneath your seat. There is something under your chair. Just reach out right now. Have you got it? Right. So this is an NFC card. This is a very special NFC card. All you need to do is, if you have an Android phone or an iPhone, take this NFC card, place it right on top of your phone, and you'll be able to claim some suite immediately from it using the Stash experience without gas, without having to set up a wallet, without having to create an account, without having to do anything complicated, you instantly have Stash in, the, in your hands. And you can send it anywhere in the world. You can send it to an exchange. You can engage with it in, in DeFi. You can exchange, uh, engage with it in a number of NFT um, platforms right away. But we think this is going to be a game changer for how users engage. Imagine this in gaming. Imagine this in commerce. Imagine this in conferences. Imagine this as a way to give tickets and, and, and to, um, tickets and assets to people in a world without ever having to deal with complex crypto. That's all I have time for today. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you.